Hey people, it's CM Writer back with another YBBG topic. You will find this topic on www.yourboyfriendsbestgirlfriend.com. Today's topic is who holds the most power and or influence in a relationship? How does that play out and why does a particular person have power or influence more than the other? Well, I asked this question a couple of days ago. And I received several responses back from different people. And as with most questions, the answers are divided along gender lines for some reason. So let me tell you some things that people feel influence who has power control in a relationship. And these are in no particular order. Uh, One being um, spirituality or a relationship with God. Another being money, whoever's the breadwinner. And finally, sex. Hmm. Now, I want you to guess who said what influences most. God, sex, or money. Did men say God? Did women say money? And who said sex? Well, I'll go to those answers right now. We'll start with the whole money thing. A lady named Tasia says, I say the men, meaning the men have the most power and influence because they are raised to be strong, powerful protectors and providers. I think that goes in the realm of the whole money thing. So she feels that Men have the power and influence because they're the ones with the strength. They're the ones who are protecting. They're the ones who provide for the families. Um, A gentleman responded to what she said, and he says, contrary to what many may believe, all men are not raised like that. And that comes from Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright actually has a lot to say about a few of these comments, but I'll get to those as they come. (laughs) Okay, let's go to who feels that sex equals control and power. Well, the first response with this in it came from Miss Speak. I'm sorry, her name is Miss Peak. <laughs> I misspoke. Well, her name is Miss Peak, and she says she feels women have the most power, and it probably has something to do with sex. Along those same lines, Ms. Lee says, women have the most power. It's all about what we teach our men we will tolerate. If women listen to their men more and use sex as a reward, men would act however they want it. Mm. So she's saying the power lies within between your thighs, <laughs> I guess. All right. So what do the guys have to say about what these two ladies said? Well, let's see. Is Mr. Right again. And he says using sex as a reward punishment would get your bleep cheated on quickly. Hmm. So ladies, do you all use, I call it sex as a weapon? And how does that work out for you? This topic actually came up with a couple of my homegirls during a bridal luncheon that we had for one of them. And she spoke about how she would, I guess, ration with her husband (laughs) based on whether or not he followed orders and i was like dang that's kind of crazy but hey you know whatever works do what you gotta do i don't necessarily agree with doing that um i think it was last year or maybe a couple of years ago i wrote an article about that particular subject because a husband wrote to me um in my article asking what would he do because his wife is rationing or she's not as into him as she usually was or as she was before. And I kind of agree with Mr. Wright. I don't think sex should be used as a weapon or as some type of reward or punishment system. But I do understand why a lot of women feel that way because, you know, older women tell you that And then, too, you see how men react based on, you know, whether or not you do indulge versus you don't indulge. But I don't think you should ever use something I feel that was, you know, created by God to keep your marriage going as some type of reward or punishment. But, hey, you do you. You do what you have to do.
Uh, well, let's go to another response that comes from a gentleman. And this comes from Mr. Mims. Oh, yes, I use your government name, but I won't use your first name. So Mr. Mims says, in a real relationship, it's neither. You are not trying to conquer your partner, but enhance each other's abilities. Power shifts. And I actually really agree with Mr. Mims because for a relationship to work, it shouldn't be about who has the final say in I have power and you don't and I'm in control and you're not. Like, if you want to have a fruitful relationship, one that's beneficial to everybody, and I see it as like a partnership, there should never be some type of power struggle going on because you have enough to do to protect your relationship from outside forces and outside influences. So being a team and understanding that some people have, you know, better abilities in certain areas than other people and working with each other's strengths. Now, in a sense, I am, I guess, old fashioned and, you know, I am a Christian. And so I do see the man as being the head of household, but that does not mean being some overbearing, overpowering force that tries to, you know, beat down his subjects or whatever. No, I see it as a position that's one that protects and provides in whatever way is necessary and available to him to make sure his family is okay. And that being such a vulnerable position being the first line of defense, it needs something on the other side to uplift and build the strength that he needs in order to do those things. So I see it as more a teamwork type of situation and not, you know, a power and, and uh, an overruling, overbearing position. So let's go to where I'll sum it up from Mr. Starks. He says, neither men nor women have power, but God, meaning God has the power, at least in a good, you know, spiritually sound relationship. That's where the power comes from. And that's my opinion as well. The power isn't something that, you know, should be fought over or should be a burden, but it's a strength. Like, where do you get your strength? Where do you get your influence? Like whenever you have a situation where God is in the middle of it, you don't have to worry about things that are coming from the outside or even internal things that are, you know, fighting and discord between the two of you because you know where to turn to for the power to keep the relationship going. Now, not everyone has the same faith. Not everyone has the same belief. So if that's not where your head is and that's not something I'm, you know, going to fight with you on or contradict you on, we all have different beliefs. You do what you do, but in the realm of where I'm coming from and what I try to tell people is from a spiritual basis and it's sometimes unconventional. Yes, that's me, but I think for the most part, it comes from a good place because as I always say, I want people to have healthy, productive, good, satisfying relationships. Now, with the whole power thing, I ask this question. I always ask these loaded questions and people, you know, jump to conclusions about where I'm going with it. But when I come to the end, this is what I want to get to. The focus should not be who controls this versus who controls that because it builds animosity. The focus should be how do I help you enhance what you have in order to benefit all of us? As Mr. Mim said, you know, it's a beneficial thing. It's an enhancement thing. It's, it's a capability thing. It's what you do to add to the relationship, not to force someone to bend to your will. So in closing, if you have anything to add to this topic, who has the power, <laughs> hit me up on Twitter at CM underscore writer or visit the blog www.yourboyfriendsbestgirlfriend.com or you can email me cm at cmwriter.com 
and I'll get your comments in. All right, bye-bye.